Hello, my name is Daniel Bartholomew Poyser, and I'm the Toronto Symphony Orchestra Principal Education Conductor. Today, Audrey Good, who plays horn with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, is going to be teaching you all about the horn, how to put it together, how to hold it, how to breathe, ways, different ways that we breathe, um, how to make your first sound, how to buzz, how to practice. All these things are going to be happening in this lesson with Audrey today. And she's going to start you on your musical journey with an instrument that's been called the soul of the orchestra. So because this is a video, you can stop at any time and we encourage you to stop and practice the things that Audrey is going to be teaching you. As well, at the end, you might have some questions that you want to ask us. You can contact us at schoolconcerts at tso.ca. Send us an email, schoolconcerts at tso.ca, and we'll do our best to follow up with you and get all your questions answered. But for now, get ready for a fantastic time learning all about the horn with Audrey Good. My name is Audrey Good, and I'm a French horn player with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. I am so excited to be here with you today to talk all about the French horn. From the basics of how to hold the thing, where do I put my hands, how do I get the mouthpiece in just right, all the way to making our first beautiful sound of the day. I feel like that's probably why we all came here to begin with, because at some point we fell in love with the sound of the horn. There's a famous composer named Robert Schumann, one of my favorites, and he is quoted as saying that the sound of the horn is the soul of the orchestra. So I'm excited to talk all about sound with you today and help you find your most beautiful sound right from the very beginning. Okay, first let's talk about how to put the horn together. We have it pretty easy overall. We have a mouthpiece and we have the body of the horn. All you need to do is take this mouthpiece, put it in the lead pipe and give it a gentle twist. The reason I say give it a gentle twist is because if you press too hard or if you're too forceful with it, it could get stuck. On the other hand, if you don't twist it at all, It'll probably go flying out onto the floor the first time you turn your horn over to empty it. So finding a good middle ground there is really important. And that's it. Mouthpiece is in the horn and you're ready to go. Next up, let's get ready to make some noise. Pull out your mouthpieces if you have them at home with you. Even if you don't, that's fine, because actually most of what we're going to talk about all day is stuff you can practice without your horn or without your mouthpiece if you don't have it with you. If you do have your mouthpiece, go ahead and grab it with me. We'll have them handy because at the end of this section, we're gonna buzz a little bit on our mouthpiece. How do we create sound on our horn? Well, sound is vibration. You've probably learned that in school. So, how do we get this mouthpiece vibrating? Two things, air and our embouchure. Those are the first two things I like to focus on with people when I'm teaching them in person. It's finding a really great balance of airflow and embouchure. Air is most important, so let's talk about that first. Have you ever really sat and thought about how many different ways there are to breathe? It's kind of crazy. Let's say you're home and your sibling decides to jump out from behind a door to scare you. They scare you and what do you do? <gasps> you gasp. Whew. That's one kind of breath for sure. What's the opposite of that? Maybe the kind of breathing we do when we're sleeping. very different kind of breathing, right? Much more relaxed. So there's this huge spectrum of how we can take air into our body. What's the best way to take air in 
for playing the horn. I would say gasping probably isn't my first choice. Why don't we try that together really fast? Pretend somebody scared you or pretend you looked in the corner of your room and saw a spider. <sighs> do that with me. And this time, when you do that, gasp the air in and then hold it. And I want you to feel where it goes. <sighs> feels just terrible, doesn't it? It's so tight. It's so tense. And I'm really only feeling that I'm getting air right at the top of my chest, right up by my throat. Everything's really clenched. It doesn't feel good. I would never want to play the horn that way. So how can we get the air lower in the body? How can we relax that process? I think if we play around with taking a lower sounding breath in, that might just help. So this time I want you to breathe with me again a few times. We're just experimenting here. And try to make more of an open shape with your mouth. And try to get the sound of the air coming into your body to be lower in pitch. You could even think about Darth Vader if you want. Are you trying that at home? Do you feel that difference? When I take a lower pitched breath, it sends it lower into my body. And when I take a high pitched breath, it sends it higher into my body. So that's a really good rule of thumb. If you're not getting enough air in, or if you feel really tight when you're breathing, try to send that air lower into the body. That's going to be way better to use on the French horn. Okay. We've covered air. That's the most important thing about horn playing. So congratulations. But there's one other thing we have to cover before we can make a sound on our mouthpiece. After all, if I just take a great breath and send it through the mouthpiece by itself, <sighs> there's no sound. We need one other thing, and that's our embouchure. The embouchure is just a word that we use to describe how we hold the muscles of our mouth when we play. Every wind and brass instrumentalist has an embouchure. All of our embouchures look different because of the different shapes of the instruments we all play. So how do we make a French horn embouchure? I think it's easiest to find your approximate French horn embouchure by saying two syllables. The word um, like um, um, and pa, P-U-H. I'll include close-ups of myself saying these two syllables so you can see my face really well. But for now, we'll just talk through it. Say it with me. Um, pa, um, pa. Do you feel when you say the word um like that, you get a nice firmness on the corners of your mouth, the corners that sit outside of where the mouthpiece will go. Here. So when you say um, hold those corners just like that and then release puh. That's where the air will come out. So when you take a really good breath like I taught you before, <sighs> say um, and then release with pa. That's approximately what it feels like to set yourself up to play the horn. So go ahead and take a moment and look at those still shots of me saying, um, pa, and practice yourself at home. Next, I'll show you approximately where to put the mouthpiece on top of that setting we talked about. Usually for people, it works well to put a little bit more of the upper lip in and a little bit less of the bottom lip in. And again, I'll include a closer picture of this so you can see really well, approximately where I put my mouthpiece. Um, pa. But don't worry, when you see mine, if yours looks different, that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. Think about it. 
everybody has a different shaped mouth. We all have different faces. We all look completely different. Why would our mouthpieces go on our faces the exact same way? It doesn't even make sense. So it's okay for your embouchure to look just like your own, very unique to you. These are just general guidelines for how to set that up. So we've talked about air and embouchure, and now it's time, if you have your mouthpiece, to go ahead and grab that because we're going to buzz a little bit. So remember, we're gonna take a nice low pitched breath, nice and low into the body. We're gonna say, um, puh, to set up our face in a pretty good position for playing the horn. We're gonna put our mouthpiece on our lips, kind of like how you figured out when you looked at my embouchure and created your own. And then we're gonna blow some air through that embouchure into the mouthpiece and see what comes out. Okay, there was a buzz. Did you get a buzz at home? It's not a big deal at all if no sound came out. That's very normal for a first time trying to buzz on the mouthpiece. There are a few things I could have you try that might help. The first thing is make sure that you're not just taking air into your body, but that you're blowing it out. Releasing air through our bodies into the mouthpiece and eventually the horn is a very physical active thing. So if you're not sure if you're sending air out of your body, test it with your hand. Make sure you can feel air rushing against your hand with a nice steady stream. Try again. However your first buzz was, let's go for an even better one this time. And if you didn't get one at all, that's okay. Let's try again. And if it doesn't make a sound, try to imagine sending air against your hand that you can really feel. Maybe try faster or more focused air and that might get you your first buzz. Let's try. the pitch of my buzz moved around. That's one of the most fun parts about playing the mouthpiece is that we can make drones. Kind of sounds like a siren or some kind of weird bird. So how did I get that pitch to change? Well, I blew faster air through my mouthpiece like I advised you to do if you weren't getting a sound. Let's try once more playing with our buzz. If you're still not getting a sound, Try even more focused, even faster air, like you're trying to blow air to the corner of whatever room you're in. A nice steady stream. And if you are getting a buzz, see if you can get the pitch to change up or down by changing the speed of your air and the focus of the inside of your mouthpiece, those lips there where we say, puh. Once more, let's do it together. That's really fun. I hope you're having fun too. Don't worry about it too much if you're not getting a big range or if you can't even move off of whatever note you're getting. That's not important yet. I think the most important thing when you're starting to experiment with your air and your embouchure and buzzing on your mouthpiece is that you're having a really good time with it. Now you know how to produce a sound on your mouthpiece. Before we apply that to the horn, let's talk about how to hold the horn. I'll grab mine. Here we go. Remember, putting the mouthpiece in with a gentle twist. Let's talk about our left hand first, the valve hand. There's really not much you need to know 
about your left hand. It's better if when you put your fingers on the valves, there's a gentle curve to them. I hope you can see that. I'll send another close-up shot of my valve hand for you so you can see really well. Some people learn to play flat fingered like this. It does the job, but it's a lot easier to eventually play fast if you curve those fingers, kind of like you're trying to hold a bubble. So nothing too tense, just nice and gentle curve, okay? The interesting hand is definitely our right hand, our bell hand. It's pretty cool that we get to stick one of our hands inside of our instrument. And what's even more interesting about that is that in doing so, our right hand becomes part of the instrument. It helps us hold it up. It helps us tune. It does a lot more than you might think. So if you're playing your horn and your hand is just sitting there in the bottom of the bell, not really contributing much, it could be doing more. Let's talk about how to put your hand in the bell. Everybody look at your horn, if you have it at home, and you'll see on the top, there's a brace here from the side. It's this brace here. Every horn has one of those braces. So I like to use that as an external cue that tells you where to put your thumb in the bell. So when I put my hand in the bell, I think about lining my thumb up with that brace on top there and gently positioning the rest of my fingers next to it right along the side of the bell. So the hand looks something like this. Gentle curve, but mostly straight. If you go too curved, it'll cover too much of the bell and it'll stop your sound from coming out. I'll include a picture of my bell hand up close so you can study that separately. That's pretty much all you need to know. Line your thumb up with this brace on top Insert your hand into the bell there, pretty much straight with maybe a gentle curve. Have your fingers lined up next to one another and use that shelf on your hand that's created to help you lift the weight of the horn. That'll help you play for a long time comfortably without hurting your neck too much. Let's move on to playing the horn. But don't forget, even if you're not with your horn, as long as you have your mouthpiece or even just your body, you can practice most of what we've talked about in this video today. Let's review really fast since this is the most important part of playing the horn, air and embouchure. And how do those two things affect the sound that you eventually get on the horn. You'll remember me saying we have to take a great breath in, nice and easy, low into the body, filling up from there. But you'll also remember that we spoke about how to focus or speed up our air enough to get a good vibration going through the mouthpiece. Now we'll get that same vibration going through the horn, and with any luck, a sound will emerge. Let me show you without pressing down any valves, I'm just gonna start blowing air through my horn and wait for a sound to turn on. How did I do that? I took a great breath in, I focused my embouchure like I'm used to doing, and I started setting faster and faster air through until a note appeared. So I want you guys to play around with that process with me a few times. You might not get the same note as I'm getting. That's okay. You've probably noticed that even without pressing any valves down, we get a whole bunch of different notes. So you might get any one of these notes as your first note that comes out. <laughs> They're all good. It doesn't matter which one you get. For me, something about that middle G comes out. That's usually what pops out for me, but it doesn't have to be the same for you. 
whatever note you get, we're going to work on making it beautiful. So let's try together. We're going to take our great breath in. We're going to set up our embouchure. And we're going to send focused air through the horn and see what sound comes out. shoot a little bit. Let's say you're having trouble getting a nicer sound to come out. Let's say your sound is a little bit more like this. Sound familiar? It might. That's okay. That's more what I sounded like the first time I played the French horn 25 years ago. I can fix that. That strained fuzzy sound just means that your air and your embouchure aren't quite balanced the right way. If you have an ordinary piece of white paper in your house, go ahead and grab it. I want to show you something. It's easier to see how your air functions without the horn involved. So let's play around with that like we were earlier with our hand in front of our face this time with the paper. I'm going to show you what my air looked like when I was playing that fuzzy kind of not as beautiful note. It looked like this. That paper didn't move, did it? You could see how tense my face was. I was tightening my embouchure really, really tight, trying to force sound to come out. But there wasn't any air moving through my body, and that's why the sound wasn't as good as it could have been. I'd like to fix that. So this time, I'm just going to keep it a firm embouchure, but not too tight. Um, puh. And I'm going to send really fast air through to this same piece of paper. And let's see if I can get it to move. Did you see the paper move that time? Why don't you try experimenting with your airflow against a piece of paper like that at home? It shows you a lot. So now that I figured out how to make the paper move, I'm going to send that kind of air through the horn. Starting again with the less than beautiful air, the less than beautiful sound, I'm going to fill the horn up with better, more focused air and see if I can fix my sound that way. Let's see if it works. able to hear how much better that sound got. It was scratchy and tense, about to go away altogether in the beginning. And the more directional air I sent through that note, the fuller and more beautiful it became. That's one of the great secrets of how to have a beautiful sound on the horn, is using your air to get it there. Sending it through a nice firm embouchure, but not too tight. And that's why we all came here together to begin with today, right? Is to connect with our own version of the beautiful sound of the horn. So I hope all of this was helpful to you as you pursue a beautiful sound on your French horn. Bye.